Adam Sandler as goofy off camera as he is on camera? I want to know. Is not a goofy man. Really? Adam Sandler. Adam, you don't understand Adam Sandler, the, the artist. Let you these know. people. A lot of people, they, 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 they see the money, they see the funny. But they <laughs> don't right. get the artist. The deep, the deep. The, the deep, how this man breaks comedy down. Yeah. Okay? Breaks it down. Formulated. Very last compound, and then just, just, just makes masterpieces. You know, give me something. Give me a subject. You know, you know, you know. Uh, happy Gilmore. Happy Gilmore was not happy. It was when not. When Adam Sandler got that script. <laughs> not okay. at all. Not at all. <laughs> no, no, no. But Adam Sandler pumped life into Happy Gilmore. Well, they tried. They they gave me Smiley McGee. Right. And I, and I said, we got to make this guy. It's not just a smile. This guy right. is as happy. Happy. Happy as a guest. Take this to the next level. <laughs> yeah, What's the man. next level from smile? Happy. <laughs> right on. Man, he does it with everything. That's the opposite of goofy. He makes everybody funny. I'm a, if, if G was pronounced with a huh, I'm a genius. A genius. I'm a genius. Do you genius. get it? Do you <laughs> understand on the net <laughs> what's going down right the now? The interesting part about Adam Sandler is he's always been this borderline nervous, deprecating self. In his public persona, his self-esteem seems to be as flimsy as his worst film's plot lines, which is why it's hard to criticize someone who seems like a good person, who keeps himself busy making and creating in order to hide himself behind his work as a comedic actor. Wait, wait, wait. I, I, I'm not, I don't have anything, uh... You have nothing to do now? You can take some time off? No, 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 no. I, I, I don't want to God forbid. Right. No. And I don't want to really have to think, think yeah. too much about myself. I need to jump into the work yeah. and, uh... And lose yourself in the keep work. Keep hiding. I yeah. keep hiding. I don't want to, I don't want any, I don't want to get to know me. <laughs> you don't? <laughs> it's pathetic. <laughs> now, Which is why his films, where he makes himself vulnerable, work so well, compared to his most outlandish characters. Hi, Nancy. What are you doing in the ladies' room, Dave? Sorry, I just heard you guys got cleaner seats than us. What? What? Sir, your hand is bleeding. I know. I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. Yeah, but I didn't do anything. Sir, I've got no way to prove that you smashed up the bathroom. I didn't do that. I didn't. Look, I'm gonna have to ask you to go. Okay. I didn't do that. I'm gonna that. have to ask you to leave. All right, please don't do this to me. Sir, I'm gonna call the police. All right. Paul uh, gave me the script and I read it and, and just I'm like, oh, this guy is me. Okay, this guy, am I going to be able to do this? I was, I was, I was nervous, yeah. but I was in. I, there was no way. I was gonna... These films, Punch Drunk Love, Rain Over Me, and Funny People, where he confronts his own persona, had been box office failures that had failed to recoup the budget. I think these early films in particular scared Adam Sandler stupid. Competition going on in town, like, you know, how much money uh, so and so's movie is going to make compared to your movie. I think, I think it, no matter what, it's, it's, it's just, I'm just excited I'm getting to make the movies. If, if I fall into that trap of uh, worrying about how much they're going to make, I'm going to kill myself over that. Yeah, you know, that, that's, that can't be good for your, uh, that guarantees me an ulcer. And I, I don't want one of those, so I try to step outside of that. Uh, confidence, so that's yeah. what, that's what yeah, happened exactly. with me. I, I was, my timing was, I don't, yeah, I can tell when I'm not funny. It's usually when I'm rushing and when yeah. I'm kind of scared and show, show the audience and sees I'm scared. <laughs> if I'm feeling comfortable, it's usually all right. He found it easier to make these lazier popcorn flicks, even if he doesn't want to admit it himself, where, let's be honest, are mostly offensive and borderline criminal when you look at the worst films he's made under his banner of Happy Madison. But uh, in the movie, the Zohan, you know, it's fun to pretend you're good at something. If I don't uh, try to accomplish something, I feel like I might be uh, screwing up a little bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is the reason he's so successful. Maybe. Right? It's that, a sickness, really. It, it is that, a sickness. It, I mean, I'm telling you, that's the reason, mm -hmm. isn't it? You mm -hmm. know, I, I, mean, that, that's, I do like that. I am, of course, but yeah. each one just sort of has something to it. We are all gonna die! Whoever's playing the part, we gear it towards them a little more. That's not to say Adam Sandler is a hack. I think he's a great comedian. Why don't you go wake up Jill? It's but she has jet lag. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. When he gives himself a little more confidence. When he doesn't make something really pathetic and easy. I was going to meet him out there. The kids wanted to go to uh, Disneyland. But they had uh, 
They were already gonna miss a couple of days of school, so we had to say no. You know. When he goes down the road less traveled, and takes a U-turn in his career, which he obviously shies away from because he has a formula that works and it makes him crazy rich. So really, his fans are to blame for his bad films. His audience eats it up, so he lets them eat cake. Here comes the double foot. <laughs> Empty, barely self-aware films, which is ironic because in all of his interviews, Sandler is obviously aware of how his films are viewed. Be, uh, yeah. yeah, have the whole crowd know you're there. Oh, I see. So you wouldn't movies. want to be seen watching your own movies? Well, that might affect the, the, the yeah, audience right. thinking they have <laughs> right. to laugh harder yeah, right. for my yeah. sake. Yeah. Or boo harder. Sandler's films refuse to grow up, ironically. Too high! This was a mistake! Let go! I can't let go! I'm too scared! Grown-ups. We could wax poetics about his work with Paul Anderson and his diamonds in the rough here and there. But it can't hide the truth that Sandler rarely leaves his comfort zone, where he can be seriously funny when he plays himself. Very proud of it, very... Uh, I'm just excited for people to see it. You know, it's like uh, when we watched it alone, and then the, uh, we were in Toronto a couple weeks ago and watched it with a big crowd, and it was like uh, 11 o'clock at night. And I tell you, when we watched it alone, yeah. I didn't know uh, how people were going to respond when they saw it. I, I know that the movies I've done before, I know the full intention is to make an audience laugh um, and get as many laughs as we can get. All of a sudden, uh, when we were alone, I, I was like, oh, wow, I don't know what, what the response is going to be. And then in Toronto, it was pretty uh, it was pretty interesting that Barry Egan was, his pain was getting a lot of laughs. Mm -hmm. And he got a lot, a lot of... Uh, Barry just, Egan's pain is getting a lot of laughs. He was, yeah, yeah, his journey. His comedy classics are retrospectively bad when it's the same tricks and jokes he's been using for most of his career since. We reevaluate Adam Sandler when he makes something like Uncut Gems. And it makes you wonder where it all went wrong. Why doesn't he just depart from the goofball comedies and begin his work he started with Anderson, where he plays a form of himself and not the characters he created? Also, not your hobbies, Dave. Just simple. Tell us who you are. I just... Maybe you could give me an example of what a good answer would be. Um, what did you say? You want Lou to tell you who you are. <laughs> no, I just, uh... That are just ridiculous. Nikki, are you a soul, or are you the spawn of Satan? No, I, I can't go to Earth now. <laughs> All right, where do I go? This way he gets an authentic laugh, or he gets authenticity itself which is priceless in movies. We laugh with him and not at him. Uh, uh, this child is brought into his life and um, he realizes that he, he can't have the old lifestyle. He, he, uh, he has to adapt to this kid's schedule. And it's about a guy growing up, growing up because he's forced into it and then realizing that growing up's not too, not too bad. He's similar to myself in a lot of ways. Um, I have a difficult time with, um, you know, I, I my whole life, I, if someone says you have, you have to do something, I've always gone the other way. A lot of the uh, scenes uh, and a lot of the relationships are from my re real life and the way I, my father uh, dealt with me and the way he loved me and, and took care of me and tried to make me laugh. You know, you're not, gonna, you're not growing up, you don't have a job, you don't have this, you don't have that. And so it's his way to say, you know, I, I, I do want to grow up here. Look, I have a kid. And um, instead of going out and getting a job like everyone else would do, he, uh, he gets himself into that jam. And the girlfriend doesn't, doesn't buy it. When is he going to grow out of his own shadow with the baby voice? For coming out here this evening. Uh, please, Billy, please, no. And the pointy fingers and the tonguey thing. How did a bee sting your tongue? Just when his fans who grew up watching his films think he's outgrew the same thing he's been doing for most of his career, they pull him back in. Just when I thought I was out, 
they pull me back in. What's my name? Dunkachino! Dunka 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 Dunkachino! And boom, there you have it. It's actually 32 seconds, so I gotta lose two seconds. Maybe you can tell me what, what part you would lose, but I think we are getting there. Burn this. He makes diamonds in the rough. And then he makes eight more movies for his ravenous fans to eat up. Sandler's career as a comedian is so unique. The closest comparison is Jim Carrey. The same line between making his signature films, for Sandler it'd be goofball comedies, and a selection of films that reflect him as a person. You know, and also when he got to know who I was and that I was going through the fame thing at the same time, right, right. you know, to play the most famous person on the planet is, uh, is was a, a kind of a natural thing for me to step into because I had all the feelings of paranoia and everything that, that go with it at the beginning. And, uh, and also, I, I, there were so many parallels. These, these scripts find me, you know, they really do at certain times of my life. And, uh, and you know, for me, that, that was about, you know, and a lot, of, a lot of the characters I've done so far have been about duality, about what you show the world and what you really are. The same thing goes for Sandler's best films. Somewhere between these two contemporaries, at the opposite ends of the spectrum, in their careers, is who they really are. Self. I need to jump into the work yeah. and, uh, and lose yourself in the keep work. Keep hiding. I yeah. keep hiding. I don't want to. I don't want any. I don't want to get to know me. <laughs> Not too bad. He's similar to myself in a lot of ways. Um, Settled into that you are an actor. Boy, I don't know. I never. I don't think about what I. What you what, are. What I am too much. I, I. I do. I was obsessed with comedy, and I still am. He does not blend in. He sticks out like a sore thumb in the crowd. His early stand-up work. He has the same nervous ticking, the same mannerisms utilized in Punch Drunk Love. The conclusion is that Adam Sandler is funniest when he's playing himself. What are we gonna do? We have to talk to someone <laughs> we about <did>. this. <laughs> you gotta get a good shrink on the show. Yes, Help we us do. Out. No other doctors. Like a psychiatrist. I just don't have anybody else I can talk to about things and... Everybody tells me you really shine. <coughs> How on earth did you land up being a comic who has to perform in front of I don't know. That was a stupid move on my part. I, uh, I don't know if I... I have moments where I'm shy. I have moments where I, I'm uh, aggressive, you know, and I can talk to people. I, I don't know. Uh, it all depends on my mood and what's going on in my life, I guess. But, um, yeah, the comedy... The fact that I'm a comedian, I'm supposed to go and talk in front of people and try to make them laugh, that, that gives me a stomachache. Is, is that something that you feel compelled to be, to be on when you meet people? Not really. I don't try to make anybody laugh when I meet them. I don't know if I have the skills to do it. So why, why I don't like getting my paint... You know, once you commit to trying to be funny and, you, and, you, and you're not funny, that hurts. Yeah. So a lot of the times I just keep my mouth shut. Barry Egan was... His pain was getting a lot of laughs. Mm -hmm. I, I've always had a lot of friends, but yeah, you know, I, I, I guess I have pain. I have pain. And my, I react off pain uh, in a comedic way. I don't know what the pain is, but it's there. I feel it. I just can't pinpoint it. I talk to a shrink about it. And he, <laughs> He thinks I'm nuts, so I don't know. It's in there somewhere. And just to close up, when you're not performing and writing and executive producing, what do you do? Well, I go to the valley. Just, <laughs> you know, I, I like to take a, a lawn chair out and sit in, on Ventura Boulevard <laughs> and just feel the wind. Thank you so much. I've really enjoyed talking nice to you. Nice talk, talking to you, too. Good luck. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't kick me. Yeah, you behaved. You see? Yeah. Four. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, me and my woman watch. <coughs> uh, me and my woman uh, did watch <laughs> CB4 in the kitchen.